Good morning, guys. In this series of lectures, we will be discussing about the guidelines on infection prevention and control as suggested by the Dental Council of Ireland. So it is a series of lectures. Today, we will be discussing about the certain things and this is the part one of that series. So th this is the first lecture. Question arises, why the infection control is important in dentistry? The reason is both patients and dental healthcare personnel, they can be exposed to pathogens during the dental procedures. Contact with blood, oral and respiratory secretions and contaminated equipment, it occurs. Proper procedures can prevent the transmission of infections among the patients as well as the dental health care providers. If we look at the modes of transmission in the dental office, there could be chances of direct contact with blood or body fluids, indirect contact with a contaminated, a contaminated instrument or surface, then contact of mucosa of the eyes, nose or mouth with droplets or spatter. And then the inhalation of the airborne microorganisms. This is the chain of infection. From the source, through a mode, the entry into a susceptible host occurs. And then the pathogen, they flourish in the body of that host that host, it becomes the source, and then the chain, it continues. Hand hygiene is very, very essential. Hand washing, washing your hands with plain soap and water. Then the antiseptic hand wash, Washing hands with water and soaps or other detergents containing an antiseptic agent. Then the alcohol-based hand rub, rubbing hands with an alcohol-containing preparation, surgical antisepsis, hand washing with an antiseptic soap or an alcohol-based hand rub before operations by surgical personnel. Question arises why this hand hygiene is important. As we have already discussed, hands are the most important or most common mode of pathogen transmission. So hand hygiene reduces the spread of ant antimicrobial resistance and it prevents healthcare associated infections. The Health Protection Surveillance Center recommends adhering to the WHO guidelines on hand hygiene in healthcare, dental healthcare workers. So dental healthcare workers are required to follow these standards as well as being exercised by the other healthcare personnel. Hand hygiene, which includes using alcohol-based hand gels that is 70% to 85% or medicated soap along with proper hand drying using disposable paper towels is essential in preventing the spread of infections. Alcohol-based gels should only be applied when hands are visibly clean. If they are visibly dirty or soiled, then it is always mandatory to use soap and water. So you can use the medicated soap for that purpose. Additionally, alcohol hand gels are not suitable for use after contact with patients sus suspected or confirmed to have Clostridium difficult or norovirus. Hand hygiene routines should include these practices, which we are going to discuss on this slide. Roll up your sleeves all the way up to the elbows. Remove all arm and hand jewelry. WHO advises against wearing rings and other jewelry during healthcare delivery as they can harbor and spread infections. Keep your nails short, especially ladies, 
avoid artificial nails and refrain from wearing any nail polish in clinical settings. Use high quality hand care moisturizers regularly to reduce skin irritation and maintain skin integrity. Do not use any jewelry, no rings. Hands need to be cleaned when they are visibly dirty. After touching contaminated objects with your bare hands, before and after patient treatment means before putting on the gloves and after removing the gloves. We will discuss the uh, putting on and putting off of the PPE and all that uh, protocol in one of those, these lectures which we are going to conduct. Efficacy of the hand hygiene preparations in reduction of bacteria. That is according to CDC. So from good to best, plain soap is good. Better is antimicrobial soap and best are alcohol-based hand rubs. Alcohol-based preparations, they are having certain limitations and they have definitely quite benefits. Rapid and effective antimicrobial action is one of the benefits. Then improve skin condition and more accessible as compared to going all the way to the sinks, sinks and washing your hands over there. But there are certain limitations. They cannot be used if hands are visibly soiled. They must be stored away from high temperatures or flames. So especially those dentists who are practicing uh, prosthodontics and where like they would be using the spirit lamps or uh, using the henout torches. So they have to keep the alcohol-based preparations quite away from their flames. Hand softeners and glove powders, they may build up. Now we are going to discuss about the personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. So personal protective equipment, it is a major component of standard precautions. They protect the skin and mucous membrane from exposure to infectious material in a spray or a spatter. They should be removed when you leave the treatment areas. It is not like that you will be wearing it and you are roaming in your uh, waiting area or in the hallways, no. Remove it as you are leaving the treatment areas. The use of PPE must be guided by risk assessment. It must be used to protect dental healthcare workers from exposure to or contact with infections or potentially infectious microorganisms. Items of PPE include gloves, gowns, face masks, goggles, and face shields. These must not be worn outside the area in which they are used, as I have already mentioned. Hand hygiene must be carried out after removal and appropriate disposal of the PPEs. Most PPE items are regarded as single use, but you have to refer to the manufacturer's instructions. Gloves. They minimize the risk of dental health care personnel acquiring infections from patients. They prevent microbial flora from being transmitted from dental health care personnel to patients. They reduce contamination of the hands of dental health care personnel by microbial flora that can be transmitted from one patient to another. Remember, Wearing gloves is not a substitute for hand washing. You have to wash your hands. You have to perform the hand hygiene before putting on the gloves. Recommendations for gloving. Wear gloves when contact with blood, saliva, and mucous membranes is possible. Remove gloves right after patient care. And always wear a new pair of gloves for each patient. We are discussing about the recommendations for gloving. Remove gloves that are torn, cut, or punctured. Do not wash, disinfect, or sterilize gloves for reuse. Now, masks, protective eye eyewear, and face shields. Wear a surgical mask and either eye protection with solid side shields or a face shield to protect 
mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, and mouth. Change your masks between patients. Clean reusable face protection between patients if visibly soiled, clean and disinfect. Efficacy of a face mask. According to a study, even well-fitting N95 respirators fall slightly short of their 95% rating in real-world use, actually filtering out around 90% of incoming aerosols down to 0.3 microns. In a review of observational studies, an international research team estimates that surgical and comparable cloth masks are 60% effective in protecting the eyewear. Even a mask made from cotton t-shirt can block half of inhaled aerosols and almost 80% of exhaled aerosols measuring two micron across. Once you get to aerosols of five, four to five micron, almost any fabric can block more than 80% in both the directions. Multiple layers of fabric are more effective and the tighter the weave, it would be better. Another study found that masks with layers of different materials such as cotton and silk could catch aerosols more efficiently than those made from a single material. Now we are going to discuss about the donning and doffing. Donning and doffing means putting on your PPE and removing your PPE. So donning and doffing protocols are foundational procedures that dental professionals must carefully follow to ensure the proper use and removal of PPE. Let's dive into the latest trends, key components, and best practices in infection control in dentistry. Donning and doffing. So donning of PPE. This process involves correctly equipping oneself with the necessary protective gear, Dental professionals must implement a systematic approach, starting with hand hygiene, selecting appropriate gloves, latex, or nitrile, fitting masks securely over the nose and mouth, and ensuring complete coverage with face shields or protective eyewear. Gowns, head covers, and shoe covers complete the ensemble, providing complete head-to-toe protection. So let's see what is the sequence how to put on personal protective equipment. Number one, perform your hand hygiene. Then put on gown, put on the mask or N95 respirator, put on the eye protection, and then finally put on the gloves. Doffing means removing. This critical process involves safely removing and disposing of protective gear after dental procedures, it is a medical sequence to prevent cross-contamination, cautious removal of gloves, masks, face shields, gowns, and head covers and shoe covers while avoiding self-contamination is a priority. Through hand washing after, like thorough hand washing after doffing, it completes the process. So once you remove your PPEs, then again, you have to perform the hand hygiene. So let's see the sequence how to remove personal protective equipment. Remove the gloves, remove gown, perform hand hygiene, remove eye protection, remove mask or N5 respirator. Perform hand hygiene after removing it. So over here, we are done with our this first lecture and soon we will be meeting with the second lecture. So till then, Thank you very much. Good night.